Well, welcome to Biohacking with Brittany. I am so excited that you are listening this week. This is a place where I talk about health and wellness and nutrition and everything that I am currently into on my health journey. I am back home now. I was just out last week. I went on a little trip out into interior BC here in Canada, and it was beautiful and amazing to take time off. And now we're just back at it as we do. This episode is great. I talk all about biological age and glycan age. And it was interesting because I actually didn't really get too much into it in this podcast, but I was tested with glycan age a few years ago. I think it was in 2020. And my result at that time was way higher than my chronological age. And I remember feeling so overwhelmed by it and feeling so, I don't want to say upset, but just like confused and discouraged really was was what it was. And I really understand when people do these health tests and they don't get the results that they want, whether it's a biological age test or a hormone test or anything like that. It's honestly really discouraging. However, it is data and it really can help you understand what's going on internally and on a cellular level. So when I had this result come in that was so much higher, it really helped me make better decisions. And there was a lot going on at that time. It was like the start of COVID and there was a lot of, I guess, like automatic stress that kind of came with that. So it'll be interesting when I retest this year to see where I'm at now in relation to what it was back then. But we get all into this in this episode. We talk about how to reduce your biological age, factors that increase it, certain times in life when it's going to increase and there's not much you can do about it, like pregnancy and postpartum or menopause. And we kind of just go into the science of what it's testing and how glycans even work in the first place and why they are such a great biomarker for what is happening on a cellular level. So enjoy this episode. I hope you in, like get a lot from it. Glycan Age is linked on my shop on my website. They are also linked in the show notes. They are in the podcast episode for this. They are on the blog post. They're kind of everywhere. So check them out if you want to get this tested. They ship everywhere, which is great. This is an at-home test that you can easily do. And then you just ship it back and they give you the results. They have like practitioners who work with them. So you can talk about your results with somebody who is a health professional, which is very helpful. And they also have their own podcast as well. And their website has a ton of information as well. So definitely, definitely take a look at that and stay tuned as I produce a couple episodes a week when I'm not away. I was away earlier this week, so there's only one this week, but yeah, I try to do, try to do two a week and a shout out to the sponsors of this week. So first and foremost, Lifestacks. This is a new company that I discovered in the last couple of months and they create a MCT creamer. So I've kind of gone back and forth with MCT oils over the years and none of them have really stuck, but it's really cool to see the product development in this space. And Lifestacks is definitely one of the companies that are leading the charge on this. So this is a powder first and foremost, and it also has nootropics in it and adaptogens, which is why I love it. So we're kind of supporting brain health and mental health from so many different aspects with so many different ingredients in my coffee. So I basically make kind of like a keto coffee or bulletproof coffee using it. So I'll do my MCT creamer powder, organic coffee from Costa Rica that I get delivered, and then goat butter from Canada, like a local farm here, because it's better for my digestion, doesn't have lactose in it. So that's kind of what I'm having in the mornings right now. And it feels super nourishing. And my brain really actually does feel like it's just like on fuego, like it's running a million miles an hour, but in a good way, in a really, really good way. So I suggest that they also have a bunch of different flavors. I personally just like the vanilla one, but they have chocolate and hazelnut too. So definitely check that out if you are looking for a potent nootropic creamer that tastes amazing. I will link them in the show notes. They're also on my shop as well. 
And a shout out to Spermidine. I just posted it about them last week. I love using Spermidine. Again, I'm not somebody who intermittent fasts anymore as much. I kind of do a little bit between my period and ovulation, which is actually the phase I'm in right now. So I can intermittent fast right now. But essentially, spermidine is great because it mimics the intermittent fasting or fasting in the body. So it helps with autophagy, which is cellular cleanup. And it's basically really great for detoxing and cleansing in this way. A lot of women struggle with fasting. So if you want some of the benefits of fasting, but you don't want to fast every single day, and you want like the cellular longevity benefits, you definitely need to be taking spermidine. I take two a day and I use Spermidine Life. They are the best of the best. So that is who I recommend. And last but not least, by optimizers. I was actually just using these on the weekend because I was eating not as clean as I normally do, let's say. And which is like a really nice way to put it when I say that I was having wine and chips, I guess. You know, that's kind of like my thing. <laughs> Is if I eat off of, eat out of my uh, diet, I, I guess it's usually chips. Like they, I literally can't have them in the house. Like we don't buy them because I will just eat the whole bag. So <laughs> when I do kind of splurge or whatever you want to call it, I make sure to take digestive enzymes because it basically just reduces the blowback on the body. So when we eat a certain processed food, there's a bunch of different like metabolic things that happen right away. And it can cause a lot of inflammation in the body. Also gut health issues. It is hard to digest. It causes blood sugar spike, all these different things. And so I just like to take digestive enzymes when I'm eating things that I don't typically eat because I just think it minimizes the negative effects. And they have the best digestive enzyme product. I have like the massive container. I have one in my car. I have one in my pantry. I have one in my fridge. I like, I have them everywhere. And I just pull on them whenever I feel like I'm kind of eating something a bit different. So I'd usually have three to four per meal. And when my husband has beer, he will take them every single time as well because it helps digest the food. So it's basically like a catalyst, makes digestion easier, and it starts the process like sooner and it just kind of gets it moving through your body in a faster way. But it's not like a laxative or anything like that. It just helps break down the food faster and reduce the negative effects of it. So digestive enzymes by, by optimizers. I will link them in the show notes. Of course, they're on my website. Go for it. Use it. And especially this summer, if you're traveling or if you have like a wedding or a party or anything like that, and you know that you know, you're going to have cocktails, you're going to have cake, you're going to have something that maybe you don't typically have. It's really helpful to have something like this. And I really recommend it to everybody. So go for it. Enjoy that and enjoy this podcast episode. I will catch you next week for another two. Welcome to another exciting episode of my podcast. This week, we are diving into the fascinating world of aging and biomarkers. And I have a special guest with me, Nicolina Lotz from Glycanage. I've actually known her for a few years now, and I got my own Glycanage biological age tested a few years ago, and we'll talk about that. But she is a renowned expert in this field, and she is going to shed light on the groundbreaking work that is being done by Glycanage to measure biological age and its impact on our health. So get ready for a bunch of information and to even order this test yourself because it's pretty fascinating. So Nicolina, welcome to the show. Hey, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's a very kind introduction of you. Yeah, of course. So can you start by providing an overview of what Glycanage is and how it's different from other biomarker tests? Sure. So we actually, our name is quite descriptive. We measure glycan aging. And I, that's quite different than actually most tests which are applied commercially because there's not a lot of labs that can do glycan analysis. And as an aging clock, we're as old as epigenetics. So actually the first glycan clock and the first epigenetic clock that was developed by Steve Horvath were published on the same date and year, which was the 10th of December, 2013. So we're scientifically 10 years old. And 
with glycans, I'll explain a little bit what they are. In essence, they're complex sugars, but not nothing to do with the sugars you, you think of as we know now. So basically, if we look at a cell, it's made of four components, which is protein, carb, which is the glycan, lipids, and DNA. And these sugars, in our, the ones that, particularly the glycans that we create, enable our biology to communicate. So they're usually coated around the cell, they're coated around the protein and the lipid, and they actually develop together with those molecules and they enable our biology to communicate as a whole. So it's a different level of information that we get compared to when we look at genomics, epigenomics, even proteomics. So this is the top layer of the proteome, which then collects all of these influences from your genetic impact to your epigenetics, which is your past environment to current environment. Yeah. I love that. I love that example. So, or that description. So what, like in the initial stages, like what led to the development of glycan age as a test and as a company? So scientifically, it was a complete accident. Our lab started in a field called high throughput glycomics, which was looking at glycobiology at scale. So before when this part of biology was analyzed, it was maybe 10 people, 20 people, 100 people what, what was a big success. And then tools were created that we can start to look at hundreds or even a thousand people. So the first 1,000 human glycans were analyzed in 2007. And this was a, a collaborative work with us and another lab. So our lab is located in, in Croatia. It's called Genos. And that's our origin. And the second lab was in Dublin. So we looked at these 1,000 human glycomes. And then as they wanted to do further research to understand, you know, how does this associate with disease or health, they realized that if you want to look at a specific condition, you have to match the people perfectly for age. They all have to be the same age. Because you can come across a young person whose profile looks like a healthy old person because he has a chronic condition as a young person, if that makes sense. So there is an underlying aging process that, that, that can be measured, which is not as specific to chronological age, but is indicative of health or biological age. And particularly the type of glycoprotein they were focused on was antibodies. So what we were actually, and what glycan age measures of course, there's many other glycoproteins and there's many other tests we do in the lab, but glycan age is best based on your antibody glycan, which is your adaptive immune system. So what we would see is this accumulation of chronic inflammation as we're getting older or inflammation. Yeah, I find that really interesting. I'm curious, and I don't have the data on this of like when I first did my test with you years ago. But if you do other inflammation tests, like if you look at like CRP and things like that, like would it, like if you had an older age, would it also indicate on your inflammation test that you can just do through your blood? Would that kind of, do they go together? I guess is my question. Not necessarily. So C CRP okay. is more acute inflammation. So it's a marker that can change, you know, a hundred fold with an infection. And if you look at it as a chronic utility, it's more specific to cardiovascular risk. Well, when we look at antibody glycum, this is you know, a far more holistic picture. And when we look at what it associates with, so far we've been able to identify over 73 different conditions, which goes from cardiovascular to metabolic, to uh, autoimmunity, to cancer, to things which are not a disease like menopause, visceral fat, smoking damage, and a lot of other things. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah, I ask because I get my blood tested every quarter and through a different company. And one of the things that they test for is HSCRP, which is C-reactive protein high sensitivity. And it's really helpful to know. And sometimes like it will show that like your inflammation is a little higher. And I kind of have like a baseline now of what it works for me and where I should be and what's optimal for me in my life. So I'm curious if I were to, you know, or when I redo my glycan age test, I wonder just like how that relates. And like you said, like it can be acute and it can change so rapidly that it's not really a reflection of maybe chronic inflammation then. Yeah. And this is, of course, it would 
correlator associate. If, if you have higher CRP, this could be reflected in your, in your glycome. But when we look at the glycome, we're looking at more something called sterile systemic inflammation that accumulates slowly with time. So if we track people longitudinally and you know, we model it you know, as, as an aging clock, on average, they would change a year per year. So it's quite stable and predictive of aging. But then when there's a disruption or loss of homeostasis, then you can see quite a you know, dramatic impact. Yeah, no, that makes sense. What are the benefits that you've seen for people who are getting this tested as a biomarker for assessing their health and aging? It's subjective insight. So you can see on yourself as an individual because it's something that connects your 40% of it is uh, heritable or impacted by your genes. And then, then the remaining is environment, including epigenetic and current environment. So it's a holistic objective view of where you are right now as an individual in your aging journey. And then if you don't have the result, well, if you have the result you like, it usually helps you maintain the behavior that got you to there in the first place. If you don't have the result that you like, it's motivational to make a change. So we really see that it is impactful for behavioral change. And then you can evaluate it in a couple months' time because it, the marker takes a few months to change. It won't be in a week or in a couple of days. It takes a minimum of, let's say, two months to, to show something. You can see within that period if the investment you made in your health is actually going to pay off in the long run. Are you tired of feeling out of sync with your body's natural rhythm? Do you struggle with menstrual cycle-related issues like fatigue, mood swings, and bloating? If you're looking to optimize your health and well-being, look no further than the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide. This comprehensive guide is designed to help you better understand and work with your menstrual cycle so you can improve your energy levels, reduce PMS symptoms, and gain a deeper understanding of your body. With in-depth information on each phase of the menstrual cycle, you'll learn how to adjust your diet, exercise routine, and self-care practices to better align with your body's needs. One of the biggest benefits of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is its user-friendly format. The guide is easy to follow and provides clear instructions on how to optimize your health throughout each phase of your cycle. Plus, it's packed with valuable information and insights that you won't find anywhere else. So whether you're a seasoned biohacker or you're just starting out, the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide is the perfect tool to help you optimize your health and live in harmony with your body's natural rhythm. And with my expertise and guidance, you can trust that you're getting the best information and advice available. So why wait? Head over to biohackingbrittany.com to get your copy of the Ebb and Flow Cycle Guide and start living your best life today. Nice. Yeah, I love that. I think it's such a biohacker thing to like test and get data on yourself and then make changes and then test to see if the changes are working. It's like just goes to the whole idea of like quantifying yourself. And it's just really great to be data informed on the choices that you're making rather than shooting in the dark and assuming that some sort of diet or supplement is meant for you. Like it's just so much better when you have data to pull from. Yeah. Well, hopefully this is something that eventually everybody would adopt because when you make investments in health, if we're not measuring them objectively, we don't really know if they're working for us or paying off or even causing damage. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, of course there's like some, I think if you're quite intuitive with your body, you know, you can have symptoms and signs and things can improve, but like you said, like what is actually happening on a cellular level and is it actually causing too much harm? So obviously some of the most common questions you probably get is like, what are things that people are commonly doing day to day that's actually, I guess, aging them faster on a biological level? Well, it's, you know, some things are natural events, like menopause we see can cause quite a dramatic uh, change. And we see the women age twice as fast when they're transitioning into menopause. So it's some pregnancy. So post-pregnancy, we usually see biological age go up and then it stabilizes about two years later. So some things are natural events that will happen to everybody. And it's just about, well, woman, uh, not 
is menopause will so far happen to every woman. It's a way to measure how these life events are impacting us and how well we're recovering from them. And then in general, good lifestyle. You know, you, you can get a little bit lucky and sometimes get away with the poor lifestyle, but eventually it catches up with you. So if you measure through time, even the people who have been getting away with, let's say, a poor diet for, for some time, eventually they're going to see an impact of that too. So it can be pretty much, you know, from sleep. We just had a study on sleep apnea where we see that individuals with a condition are an average seven years older due to the condition. So sleep has a big impact, but it's, it's a balance of all these things. And then it's also personalizing our lifestyle to us, which is a science that's now being developed because there's no one size fits all. So also telling you that one particular thing is working would be false because different things work for different people. Are you ready to supercharge your mornings and unlock your full potential? I love using Lifestacks MCT creamer for this. It is the perfect boost for your coffee that will revolutionize your fasting routine. Get ready to kickstart your day and be your absolute best self. Lifestacks MCT creamer is meticulously crafted with rich flavors and the world's creamiest MCT to please your taste buds and keep you satiated. This advanced blend of nootropics and adaptogens provides optimal nutritional support, giving you the ultimate edge to maximize your productivity while fasting. With Lifestacks MCT Creamer, you'll experience upbeat energy that will keep you feeling great all day long. So say goodbye to those midday slumps and hello to a sustained and natural source of energy that will fuel your mind and body to accomplish all of your goals. What sets Lifestacks MCT Creamer apart is its premium nutrients and 45 fat burning calories. It not only energizes and satiates, but also enhances your metabolic benefits. Now you can fast better and longer with ease, knowing that you're providing your body with the fuel it needs to thrive. So here's how it works. Step one, you simply add Lifestacks MCT creamer to your coffee. Step two, get all of your stuff done, experienced enhanced focus, mental clarity, and increased productivity. And step three, fast with ease, knowing that Lifestacks MCT creamer is supporting your fast every step of the way. You can also use this when you're not fasting like myself, like I add it to my coffee with my goat butter every single morning as a keto coffee that I do, and it tastes like phenomenal. My favorite flavor is the vanilla, but it also comes in chocolate and hazelnut as well. The MCT oil, the MCT powder is actually powered by Go MCT, which is the world's most premium medium chain triglyceride powder. So it's made with pure C8 and C10, C10 MCTs for maximal ketone production, which is why I love it. I love using the best of the best, and this is why I'm recommending it to you. So don't miss out on trying this. I really recommend it. It will be linked in the show notes of this podcast episode. It's also on my website, on my shop, and you can check it out right away. That's Lifestacks MCT powder. And they are on Amazon as well, which I love because it makes it so easy for all of us to get it. So check it out today. Ignite your mornings, fuel your fasting and unleash your full potential. Yeah. I really love a lot of what you were saying. And I was actually going to ask you about like fertility and pregnancy and postpartum. And I think that makes a lot of sense actually that it goes higher during those times And for, I guess, like two years after birth, because in the research that I've done and what I've studied says that you basically shouldn't even be really considering having a second child or a third child or a next child until two years after your first, like the previous birth, just because it takes the body that long to actually recover and restore like the nutrient stores in the body to get to like healthy levels again. So it totally makes sense that from what you guys have seen, it's actually a two year window as well to kind of get your baseline back to a good place. Yeah. It's quite dramatic. Sometimes we see it go up 10 years and it, it's, different for, you know, some recover very quickly. Some women don't see an impact, which is very, very rare and some keep it on for years. Yeah. I wonder 
Yeah, I guess I wonder if that is related to like lifestyle, as in like more stress, lack of sleep lack of like self-care and like just kind of juggling more like do you think that is the reason why or do you think it might have something to do with like even breastfeeding and having to actually feed somebody else and like take nutrients from your body and like the depletion that that might cause as well we know it's connected to breastfeeding because we would see the positive changes happen post breastfeeding wow that's so interesting that's so interesting yeah because obviously breastfeeding is such a natural thing to happen. And like, that's kind of what we're meant to do, I guess, like breast is best is kind of the whole narrative. And I agree with that. But the fact that that ages you faster (laughs) really sucks. (laughs) Well, I think, of course, it's not just the breastfeeding. That's when all the hormone hormones go back into balance post breastfeeding. So it wouldn't and this is many things in life have an impact. It's about have you recovered from it? Of course, you, know, you, you cannot avoid damage your whole life. You're going to have damage from, from different things you go through. It's just about measuring after that period, have you recovered? Have you done any type of research into different areas around the world that might have a lower biological age through your test? So we did a population study a while ago together with the Human Glycom Project, where we looked at 31 different populations around the world. And we saw that, yes, this is related to the country you're coming from or the ethnic background, but more so it was connected to the development index of a country. So socioeconomic impact is huge. And if you look into wealthier countries like UK, you see of course, much younger glycomes on average than you would see in a country that's less developed. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I was just wondering if the kind of like workaholic lifestyle that tends to be in places like the UK or Canada or the States, like actually is detrimental to your biological age versus living somewhere where, you know, it's more balanced and is more of like a healthy lifestyle, like overall approach. So that's a difficult one because we never had type of impact of work study, but this is something we, as a company, all of us do it, and we're now almost almost 30 people. And we can measure damage from work. <laughs> so it does happen that we have a very hard period and somebody, you know, my age has gone up significantly in the last year. And, and so has my um, co-founders. And that's a direct damage of the... Uh, amount of work and you know, all the imbalances of sleep to not having regular healthy meals to traveling to four continent continents every two months or something. So all of it has an impact and yeah, definitely work or overwork will age you. And there's this nice, I forgot, I think it was like a quote from somewhere that you spend your life up to forties making up your wealth sacrificing your health in between and then you spend the rest post 40 buying back your health with the money you've made wow that's yeah (laughs) i could see that (laughs) i could see that in our society for sure (laughs) yeah that's kind of sad actually though just to think about how many people do that not that it's anybody's fault like it's basically a result of the like you said, like the socioeconomic way of things and how we do things. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. So, I mean, we've definitely talked about things that can be tough on your biological age, but what about things that can actually improve it? Like what is the data and the research said that you've seen? The strongest data so far is uh, weight loss and caloric restriction. Now, all of these studies were done in populations which were slightly overweight. And we know that, and we've done it, We've done initially a study of twins, which are followed over 20 years. And if they gain weight, we see them get biologically older. And if they lose weight naturally, we see them get biologically younger. And then we did weight loss study, which was bariatric surgery. And we would see that on average, patients would go down nine years in six months post-surgery, where one reduction, one, one of the participants, well, we got samples from a clinical trial, but one of them went down 37 years and another person only went down two. So of course, you know, this is going to benefit everybody. And then we did a caloric restriction study, which was 800 calories per day for eight weeks 
In 700 people, on average, they lose about 10 kilograms, and we see their biological reduce, uh, biological age reduce for, I think it was, if I'm not wrong, about five years, in eight weeks. So wow. weight is the magic longevity drug, if you want to call it, but only for people who are overweight, and a lot of us are overweight. So th- that's one that we're sure of. Another one that's coming up now, and we're having more and more data for is improving gut health. And the original data came from microbiota transplants and colitis patients, where we would see their glycans get younger post-intervention. And we're now running the same in a number of trials, which are focused on improving gut health through, through diet. And we're seeing quite positive impacts there as well. When I feel stressed or anxious, I find it challenging to fall asleep at night. My mind races with thoughts, making it hard to quiet my thoughts and relax enough to fall asleep. This often leads to a vicious cycle of sleep deprivation and heightened anxiety. I started using Sleep Breakthrough because I knew that deep sleep and REM sleep were more important for rejuvenation, fat burning, and muscle building. Now I feel like I'm getting the quality of sleep I need to support my overall health and fitness goals. I used to take over-the-counter melatonin products, but I realized that they can be dangerous and lead to dependence and a sleep hangover. Since switching to Sleep Breakthrough, I've been able to naturally produce melatonin without any negative side effects or dependency concerns. I found that optimal sleep really is the foundation for success, both personally and professionally. Since incorporating sleep breakthrough into my routine, I've noticed a significant improvement in my overall well-being and performance. You will not get addicted to sleep breakthrough, which is one of my favorite parts about it. And it is a all natural formula, which provides the body with the precursors to melatonin and the necessary molecules to produce it naturally. It is a natural formula, which is fantastic. If you're struggling with sleep, I highly recommend giving Sleep Breakthrough a try. It's truly a game changer. You can go to www.sleepbreakthrough.com slash biohackingbritney and use my promo code biohackingbritney during checkout to save 10%. So that is also linked on my shop and in my podcast show notes for you to check out and start sleeping better today. Oh, that's so interesting. The gut health aspect is so interesting. I mean, I think, yeah, weight loss makes a lot of sense, but it's also interesting just thinking about this and how it applies to people who are of in a healthy, healthy weight and what they can do to improve their results. How often do you recommend that somebody get their glycan age tested? Depends what you're doing. So if you are starting a new intervention or this can be a supplement it can be a diet shift it can be a new behavior you can test in two to three months to see what type of impact this had on you once you've seen that it had a positive impact you would just maintain the behavior and maybe test again six months later or a year later if there's nothing else you know else you've added in well if you're adding in something else it's good to also see how has this new thing impacted you so it depends on you if you have not changed your lifestyle in a year you would test once per year. Usually people test around their birthday. This is when they think about aging. When they're more actively working on doing something, they would test every couple of months. Smart. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think it'd be so interesting to test a couple of times a year just to get enough data on yourself. And again, like just to track your progress, track what you're doing. I just find it so interesting and useful. I was wondering, do you have any specific success stories or case studies that you can share about individuals who've benefited from doing the glycan age test? Uh, We have many on our website. So we try to, when somebody comes and brags about an improvement, we usually reach out to them and we ask them (laughs) for a you know, uh, interview for their journey. And then you have quite a few examples of those on, on the website. I can highlight maybe one, which of course I, I know personally, so I know her story very well, but she had age, which was close to her age, I think five or six years ago now. And she was expecting to be much younger because she was very healthy or invested a lot in her health, invested a lot in her diet, 
only bought organic food, only ate certain things, was quite slim, so forth, so forth. So she was quite disappointed that her age was her biological age was exactly her age. And then she did a follow on blood panel, which showed that she had an underactive thyroid. She didn't have any symptoms of that. She did not have a full on develop Hashimoto's, but she was heading in that direction. And she was also uh, intermittent fasting to a point that she would only eat dinner. So she would skip breakfast, she would skip lunch, and she would only eat dinner. And there is more and more data coming out that's not too healthy for the thyroid if you have a sensitive thyroid. And if you are maybe a bit overweight, underweight, and she was slightly underweight. So she started to, well, first then she had a baby. So there is not much you can do around that. So she went up 10 years and that also increased the problem with her thyroid. And then it took about two years to experiment with different things, mainly diet, supplement-based, and nothing really changed her results. She went back to her age after two years post the baby, but nothing changed her results. She kept getting the same age in that period. Until she focused on, well, she eliminated gluten for six months and she focused on a diet that optimized for diversity of plants that optimize her microbiome. And in that period, she dropped, I think it was seven or eight years, which was the first drop she's seen in years. So that diet shift really made an impact on her. And then she did her labs for her fiber and her if she was developing Hashimoto's, it was in full remission. Wow. That's such an interesting story to go through. I'm really impressed that she was able to do that. And it's it's very inspirational to hear that. Because that, obviously, I think it's tough for people. Like even when I got myself tested, my age was higher at the time. And I think it's hard when people get results back like that, especially when you are trying to be healthy and you're trying to like heal from certain things. And it's honestly really discouraging. So it's nice to hear inspirational stories from people who have actually turned it around and really made it work for them. Yeah, it is really tough. What we see is if you're working on it as an individual, it's tougher than if you're working on it with a practitioner. We're seeing more and more very predictable success in going down in, in, in the score by working with preventive medicine practitioners who have a whole scope of from their medical training to functional medicine to lifestyle medicine that they add in and combi- can combine together to treat an individual uh, person. Nice. I love that. I'm actually thinking about studying with the Institute of Functional Medicine this year, starting this year. So I am very interested in functional medicine. I think it's a fascinating world. Yeah, this is very cool. I'm curious the future that you see for your glycanage company. What do you think? Like, where do you think you're going? What is the ongoing research right now? Like, what, what's coming up for you guys? So there's a lot that's been in the research pipeline for a, a long time because we our, our lab started now 16 years ago. So we've been looking at many different conditions for over a decade now, like diabetes, cardiovascular disease, last four years, menopause, but also autoimmunity and so forth. And what we have with the aging clock is a general marker that's indicating decline in health before it's turning into a specific issue. But then through the glycans, because they're like a language around your proteins and your cells and your lipids, you can identify certain signatures which are specific to certain diseases that you might have a predisposition to, which is connected to your genetics, that you might be on the path of developing or that you might already have, but you haven't been diagnosed. So we're working now on a broad diagnostic test. Well, going towards at first, it will be an aid to diagnostic. So it'll give you information like a similar to a genomic test, and then you would do follow-on testing to define if you have an issue or not. But it will be a test looking at you know, all the different structures we, for now, measure in antibodies and giving you associations with all of these different conditions that you might have a risk of or you might be on a path to developing. And what's different to that and genomics is first it's preventive. So we see that in majority of the conditions we've researched and published on, glycans change up to a decade before you develop symptoms and you're diagnosed with a disease. And this was first seen in rheumatoid arthritis. So this was identified almost 40 years ago now. 
they saw that glycans shift 10 years before symptoms of rheumatoid and the diagnosis. We then saw it in diabetes, in cardiovascular disease, in many Parkinson's, many other conditions. So it's early enough to give you time to do prevention. So that's what we're working on. That's the next stage. Of course, this is a long d- development, but being able to specifically tell you what you're headed to in the next 10 years. And then the advantage of this, and for example, genetic risk, is this, this is something you can impact and change with lifestyle, with intervention. So you can identify risk early, you can do something to intervene, and you can prevent the problem or push it as far as possible. As a biohacker and somebody who is just super into health, especially on a cellular level, I really, really value autophagy. And there's different ways to trigger autophagy, like fasting. But as someone who, you know, is very wary of her hormones and menstrual cycle right now, fasting every single day isn't something I am currently looking at doing. However, you can trigger autophagy through taking spermidine. So I take spermidine from a company called Spermidine Life. I talk about them on my social media as well. And essentially, I take two of their supplements every single day. Autophagy is the cellular renewal process that happens. And when you take spermidine, you are helping to trigger this to happen more often and more frequently. And so basically, you are getting healthier, more active, cleaner cells, and kind of killing off and getting rid of the ones that are sluggish and old. And we really, really do want to help this process and let it happen more naturally in the body, but we can also support it through taking spermidine. This process decreases as we age. So it actually gets more and more important that we you know, bring in things like a spermidine supplement to support it. You also notice a difference about two to three months after taking spermidine every single day in your hair, skin, and nails. It has made my hair grow. My nails are so long right now. Seriously, they are so long and it really helps you have glowing, healthy skin. So it helps with longevity. It helps with cleaning up your cells and it helps with all of the beauty things that we all care about. You can try spermidine. I suggest it. They even have a subscription. You just sign up for a subscription and then you don't even have to think about it. It just gets delivered to your house. Isn't that so easy and smart? I take their current one that's called Extra Plus. This has 1,300 milligrams of Selvio wheat germ extract in it, which is the spermidine. You can go to my website, www.biohackingbrittany.com, go to my shop page and click to Spermidine Life right there. Use my link, use my discount code, which is biohackingbrittany in all capitals, and you will get a discount on everything. They even have powder forms you can add to water. They have stronger forms, which I'm taking right now, or you can take the basic formula. There's lots of different options for you. And it will be linked in the show notes of this podcast episode as well. So go right now, try Spermidine Life if you want to enhance your autophagy, support your longevity, and also get some hair, nails, and skin benefits. I love that. Yeah, that's so exciting. I'm, yeah, I'm I'm so excited to like see that come out and see, yeah, just hear more about it and the content that's going to come out about that and just how helpful it is for people. I I like, I really, really do love what you guys are doing. And it's been cool to be able to work with you over the years. So I want to ask you a few fun rapid fire questions to kind of finish up our interview, just to like get a better sense of everything. And so the first one, if you could describe glycan age in just three words, what would they be? Making prevention possible. (gasps) Wow. Good job. (laughs) That was so fast. (laughs) Okay. The second one, what you kind of shared about this a little bit, but what is the most surprising or unexpected finding you have discovered through glycan age testing? That you can age yourself by going to the gym too much. And I think this is something that's coming up more and more as evidence that actually the food industry funded a lot of exercise research to try and diverge people from focusing on junk food to focus on doesn't matter what you eat you can burn it in the gym 
So a, a lot of study in that area was funded by uh, yeah, big food companies. And what we're finding more and more is that this calories in, calories out theory is not really true. And it actually makes sense. If you are going to the gym to push your body to build new muscle, and then at the same time, you're depriving yourself of calories, you're in an intensive diet, you are burning the candle at both ends. So the response is naturally chronic inflammation. And we see that if sports are done in a way that you haven't caused this imbalance, so you have sufficient energy from rest and nutrition, you don't see any chronic inflammation develop. You only see positive effects. We only see people get younger with, for example, sprint training or different types of exercise, which are not combined with an intensive diet. So what we see is that diet on its own works great. Exercise on, it, on its own works pretty good as well. But if you combine the two, as in two stresses to the body at the same time, actually you don't see a positive shift. And it's still something, you know, this is all studies with, you know, now we did one with a thousand people going to the gym. So we're still understanding the whole process of what, what does this chronic inflammation in sports mean? But it is, uh, you know, if we look at athletes, their careers are pretty short because of the damage they do to the, their body in this period. And then the way athletes trained, it, train is promoted to individuals as how they should train. So it's promoted to them that you should also spend two hours in the gym a day or an hour in the gym a day. And what more and more studies are showing is that more is not necessarily more. And there was even a study looking at all-cause mortality and strength training. And it showed that if you do 90 minutes of uh, strength training per week, you reduce all-cause mortality by 20%. So great, we should all do at least 90 minutes of strength training. But if you do more than three hours of strength, tra strength training per week, you increase all-cause mortality by 10%. So there's diminishing returns with too much exercise. And of course, this will be very individual. If you're an athlete, you spend a lot of time, energy in your recovery, so you could tolerate more. But if you're somebody who has a demanding corporate job, and then you're adding an hour of the gym and a diet on top of that, you're not going to have a positive outcome out of it. Yeah. I find it so interesting that you're talking about this because it's against like so much of what is said to us and what we see on social media and everywhere is like, you know, the healthy lifestyle of working out all the time and such a healthy diet all the time. But yeah, it's, it could just be too stressful on the body. So how do we get the benefits from that in the right amount for us without stressing us on a cellular level is like, the ultimate question. And I think it's very difficult for the average person to kind of honestly figure that out. Yeah, it's really tough. We need these objective measures and we need to push the science further a bit to understand. And this will always be individual. My last question for you is if you could use glycanage to assess the age of any historical figure, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, I would love to test Richard Branson. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's he has quite an impressive lifestyle and he's done all the stresses of entrepreneurship so i would love to see where he is and if you like i can add another one yeah go for it if we could have given this test to steve jobs yeah when he got into trouble yeah oh my gosh that would be so interesting yeah. Even just like people who, yeah, like Steve Jobs, who just are so creative and also work so much. Like, I just wonder what they would be. Or even, I think it'd be so interesting to test like a president before they go into the White House versus like four years after. <laughs> like, how stressful that's been. I don't know if you've ever seen the memes of like the amount of gray hair at the beginning versus at the end of their term. It's just like, way more because it's obviously such a stressful job. So even something like that would be really cool to see. Yeah, I can imagine this is probably one of the most stressful jobs in the world. And yes, where they would have aged a few decades and probably a decade per year in office. 
Jeez. Yeah. That's a lot. Okay. So if people want to get tested with glycanage, where can they go and how can they connect with you? So we, we have a website with a web, web shop where they can access the different packages. There's a package of one where you just discover where you are and then you have a consultation to understand you know, what's driving that result and to give you a bit of an action plan for the future. Or you can do the before and after test, which is for any intervention you're planning on doing. Or if you're looking, we can also suggest you things to do from your results. We have a resource on the website called the Glycan Hub, which has a podcast where we interview all the leading glycobiologists globally, and we try to simplify the science. There's also a blog there that interviews a lot of our customers, a lot of the different clinical partners we work with, and all the different interventions uh, they're trying as individuals or doing in practice. And on my handle, I'm very poor. I'm not very good at socials, I have to admit. Maybe LinkedIn. I, I'm pretty, I'm most active on LinkedIn. So I'm yeah, always happy to hear from somebody there. Yeah. Amazing. I will put all of that in the show notes and on my website so I can link to everybody super easily for you and hopefully get some people tested. Cause I know a lot of people are going to definitely be interested in doing this. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the podcast. This was great to chat with you again. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to another episode of biohacking with Brittany. If you're interested in finding the show notes or the sponsors for this episode, you can do so on my website, which is biohackingbrittany.com. Remember to follow me on Instagram where I'm most active. My handle is at biohackingbrittany. And if you're interested in working together and you want to email me directly, you can do that. My email is info at biohackingbrittany.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and having you tune in next week.